Right, Cura team, and welcome back to Daisy Technical All Things Weapons Light. I guess, as I've said before, where I take a look at all of the available weapons on the server currently, not planning for the new one with 1.25, and we take a look through some of them and some of the basic characteristics and some of the other bits and pieces, but nothing too technical, nothing too tech heavy, and nothing which is going to be involving things like the amount of rounds per second, the amount of damage per second, uh, the differences in ranges and everything else, uh, as I mentioned in the first episode this is really just a familiarization with all of the weapons that are and if you want more technical details please go and check out Wobo's weapon tool it will tell you everything you need to know except how to be good with one of them because how to be good with one of them is something that you're going to be able to do by getting out there and doing it so I've said that we've covered mostly civilian weapons and we're going to be going on to mostly military style weapons. So let's start over here with the submachine gun category. So we have here the Scorpion and the Scorpion is probably one of the uh, earliest submachines that you're going to actually run across um, because it is the kind of thing which you can switch over to full auto that you will find in police stations down by the coast. Now the good news is this cheeky little fella will take a pistol suppressor as well. So there you go, you've got the cheeky little scorpion. Um, yeah, I mean it fires 380s, which uh, as I mentioned before, not my favourite round to have. Um, but I've been killed by scorpions before, so they're pretty effective. I mean the point and squirt kind of thing um, obviously works pretty well. Um, because they'll pepper you with, with a fair amount of rounds pretty quickly, and that'll be the end of you unless you're wearing a plate carrier. Um, the magazine itself only holds 20, but you can obviously carry a bunch of different magazines, and you've obviously got the suppressor, um, like I've said, that comes along with it, um, which is absolutely fine. And, um, yeah, takes up a 12 slot, weighs about 2 kg, compact, nifty, something to keep about your person, for sure, why not? I mean, it's an early game, why not? Um, we've got these two now which are very similar. You've got the SJ5, uh, SG5K and the USG45. We'll have a look at the SG5 first. And again, all of these submachine guns are the same. They all take the pistol suppressor which is very nice because you get, you're given this opportunity of having something which as well as being able to go, uh, in this case, semi-auto, burst and full auto. And if you want to know how to change those on a weapon, it's holding L2 and using X. So you get burst round, full auto, semi-auto, and um, zeroing, as I've said, is up and down. So you can do up and down with the sights but pretty much as fired from the hip, it'll only go to 25. Um, yeah, nifty bit of kit, the SJ5K. Comes with some uh, light attachments. You can put in some, in this case, I've got combat sights on it. Um, if you have the pistol flashlight, you can put the pistol on. I think I've only got the universal flashlight here now, but you can put a pistol flashlight on it. And this one comes with a, a or not comes with, but what you can get is a compensator. Now you can't have a compensator and suppressor on the same weapon at the same time. The compensator, as it says, is to um, help with uh, muzzle recoil. So the idea is that obviously you get this kickback from it, which is a little bit of kickback, not an awful lot, but the idea is that that prevents some of that kickback, if that's what you're after. So it's up to you. Do you want the suppression, or do you want the uh, kickback? It's pretty noisy without the suppressor, to be fair. Um, but there you go. Again, about 3kg, takes up 15 space, uh, it, it, it's one of those kinds of things. 919, which is a lovely little round, plenty of them around the place. It's the kind of thing that you could use on uh, on single, uh, or, or well, semi-auto or burst is what you've got, to take out Zeds. Um, and you can also use it for close quarters taking out players. Um, 
yeah, not not a bad little piece of kit. Um, I, I should probably use them more often than I do, to be honest. Which then brings us on to the USG, which is... Um, I don't know exactly what it's based on in real life, but this one comes with a little bit more things. You can put a ghillie wrap on it, we've got the sight, obviously. It doesn't come with a compensator. It does come with the possibility of carrying a, a suppressor. Pardon me. It does come with up to 25 rounds. I mean, the only thing that I would say is, nah, 45s. 45s. Uh, oh, I better load it. I've got a summary. We're not chambered. Yeah, I mean, it sounds it, doesn't it? It just doesn't. It's, it's more like a pistol than anything. I mean, yeah, okay. We go full auto, but it's, um,. We've just run out of um, run out of stuff on that one. Thought we had another mag in there. Do you have another mag in there? There we go. Yeah. Mm, not quite as sexy sounding as the ST5K, I'm afraid. Yeah. 18. Space. About 3 kg. And uh, and then we have this thing, which which people roundly lambast. Um, for some strange reason, um, I think I've got, uh, got all the suppressors on those. Um, I, I, when I first started, and maybe that's a giveaway, but when I first started, um, I, I really enjoyed using the Bison, um, es especially for um, clearing Zeds. It was a great little piece of kit for clearing Zeds. Uh, it absolutely was. I, I never had any problems with it. 380s again, which is not my favorite ammo, to be fair, um, for stuff. But a, a headshot, yeah, a couple of headshots would be fine. You, you take out the Zeds. But a lot of people complain it's very ineffective, full stop, and it's really not everybody's favorite weapon. Uh, I stopped using it when I moved on. Uh, it's got this interesting circular cartridge, a uh, circular magazine, which... Um, fits onto the bottom of the gun um, like and, and forms part of the handle rather than actually sticking straight down. It does take a variety of different scopes. In this case, I'm, it's, um, I'm carrying KAs. It's got a rail, so it can carry side-mounted uh, KA scopes on it, which, which is fine, um, I guess. That one's not got a battery on it, but other than that, yeah, I mean, not... not Probably not super. Probably not my not my go-to weapon these days. That's SMGs. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick the SG5, and I'd like to have it about me. Um, it does take up a little bit of space, though. That'd probably be my my only beef. Right now, we move on to some of the bigger and larger and sexier categories. Here we got the sniper rifles, and we got the assault rifles. And there's probably a reason why there's so many sniper rifles and particularly assault rifles in this game. So we'll go and have a look at some of these uh, some of these sniper rifles that you can see laid out before you. We'll start over here with the Pioneer. So the Pioneer um, takes up 27, fires 55645s, which is a handy round. It's a fairly standard round you'll see in a lot of some of the assault rifles as well. Uh, there's the 55645 and the 55639s. Um, and this is the one that you will find associated with uh, the police roadblocks and, and various other bits and pieces. Um, it will take a variety of scopes. Um, so this one is carrying the ATOG 432. It has an interesting little cartridge, so it only packs five. So again, these are not meant to be um, high rounds, uh, high, high rates kind of things. This one will fit the uh, standardized suppressor so you've now got a pioneer with a standardized suppressor so you've got a fairly good sniper rifle which is which is pretty good uh it will zero out naked to 300 and with this it will zero one out to 600 um which is pretty good it only has a single shot because it is a single shot weapon it is um in that regard, um, fairly slow because it's bolt action, but it is a sniper rifle, and that's that's uh, not to be um, forgotten about. 
and um, yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. It's not a it's not a bad little piece of kit, honestly. Um, some people have said it's very much underrated actually in the game because a lot of people um, get it and drop it and move on, but actually not that bad. I I've probably not played with it as much as I could or should. Uh, but it, it does seem to be a nice bit of kit. And like I say, you can actually get a suppressor on it if you get the right kind of suppressor. And um, and you can probably fit a variety of different scopes on it. If it'll fit the ATOG 32, it'll fit things like combat sights and various other alliance uh, sights and things like that. Uh, so it's going to give you plenty of reasonably decent range. Right, we've got the Savannah here. Um, so, this is really now some of the hunting rifles, which, yes, okay, hunting rifle can double up as a sniping rifle. Of course it can. And this carries 308s. And 308s are a fairly mighty round, which uh, in the right hands are one shot deadly. Two characters. Comes on with a hunting scope. You can put a hunting scope on it, which is uh, pretty great. you got a 4x, 8x, 12x magnification um and it will fit a suppressor i don't know if it'll fit no i don't think it will fit the only thing because i tell by the end of the nose of the actual barrel that the only thing you're going to fit on this is one of these um plastic bottle suppressors it doesn't going to come with a suppressor that you can standard fit on it and it comes with a mag and the mag holds 10 which is not a bad amount actually um a 10 mag um that's that's not a bad amount at all and like I said, you've got this, you'll go out to 800 meters with this thing. So, you know, that's that's pretty handy, pretty handy piece of kit. Um, certainly one of the more preferred bolt-action sniping rifles that you will get in a civilian context. It's really a civilian hunting rifle, which is doubling up as a sniper rifle on this game. But it's certainly with those 308s, very nice. You've got the uh, SSG-82 here, which carries the 54539s, which again is the law enforcement variant. Um, so I don't think it carries any natural suppressors. I think it will hold the bottle suppressor, but I don't think it's going to carry anything else. It doesn't have a suppressor of its own. Uh, I've got the pistol suppressor. I've got the uh, standardized suppressor. I uh, don't think I got a normalized suppressor um, for this one, but um, it's bolt action. Um, it's not too bad, I suppose. I mean, it's zeroing out to 100 is probably the only downside, and even with the scope, it won't go beyond 100. So you're talking about something that's actually, as they said, urban environments, so it's not meant to exactly be going far. Um, and it won't be. That's probably what we can say about that. We've got here what's the M70 or the Tundra. So, the M70 or Tundra. I mean, it is definitely one of the more favoured guns in the game. I, I tend to keep an eye out for it as a sniper rifle, but it does take up a lot of space. A 30, like I said, a lot of weapons are 27, and you'll have been keeping track of some of the spaces for some of the other weapons I've been looking at. Um, and about 3, 3 kg. But I guess, if you're going to have it slung over your shoulder, does it matter how much space it takes up? I guess. Um, yeah, 308s. Get a hunting scope on it. It will take only a bottle suppressor, but it's a very, very nice weapon. Um, it'll single out to 800 uh, with the scope. Naked, it's going to go at 200, but you got this lovely... <laughs> lovely solid sound to it. you got that sort of metal ring at the end. Uh, very nice weapon. Very, I always look out for it. I look for it. It's very effective. Um, I've used it before in a number of situations. I think it's pretty, pretty good. You have the Blaze out here, which is listed as a sniper weapon, which is... I'm not... I mean, it says it'll do 200, I guess. Um, I mean, the thing with the Blaze is it's a break-action double-barrel 308 weapon, um, which is which is interesting 
in my mind um, because I don't equate that necessarily. It has that very distinctive sound, that very kind of uh, tinny, echoey, long-lasting sound. Um, and it's pretty lethal at close range, but it's it's not really something I've ever spent a lot of time with. Again, you can put a hunting optic on it, you can put a ghillie on it, you cannot muzzle it at all, it's always going to be loud. Um, takes up 27, weighs about 3 kg. Uh, it's it's a civilian weapon. It is what it is, I suppose, if you use it. A lot of people rave about it. I've never found much use for it. E with only two shots, you got to be real, real good. Got here the Mosin, of course, which is, uh, which is something legendary. It's like an old school weapon. Um, five shot bolt action internal magazine, which is fine. This one comes with a PU scope and a compensator. Like I've said, can't fit suppressor on it while you've got a compensator on it. But in this case, you're only ever going to fit a bottle suppressor on it. It does have a mammoth uh, bayonet you can stick on the end of it. Though, for this particular game, I'm not really sure why you would want that. Um, the bayonet's better as a hand weapon, to be honest. Um, but it's around and about a lot. You see it a lot. And, um, you know, naked zeroes up to a kilometer. Slap the scope on. Zeroes up to 1300. So again, one of the longest shots. For sure. And as a bolt action, it's actually pretty pretty solid and pretty fast. Um, so... Yeah, a lot of people also swear by the Mosin. Um, 76254s. Uh, yeah, you can find them. Uh, you can certainly find them e easy, relatively easier to find, I guess, uh, out of it. You know, most of those rounds, 7.6254, 308, you'll find them as you go around. You may not be drowning in them, but they are kicking around the place. Um, again, large, 30, about 5 kg. It's big, old, it's full of wood, it's heavy. Um, it is one of those things that are a bit of a monster to carry around. Um, I guess it is quite distinctive when you actually stick it on your back and you see it sticking up like that. It's quite obvious what you're carrying. Um, so, yeah, but it's, again, it's a civilian weapon, predominantly. Um, I, I mean, I say that in that I mean you find it mainly in civilian areas. I think there's probably every chance it used to be an old military weapon, judging from the look of it. It's got that musket, and why would you have a civilian weapon with a bayonet? Um, but you're going to find it nowadays mostly in the civilian areas around the map. CR-527, um, again, another bolt-action hunting rifle. A bit shorter, this one. Uh, a little bit shorter, a little bit neater, a little bit more compact, uh, a little bit more trim. Bolt action fed from a magazine, so it has a magazine that carries five. Seven, six, two, three, nines. Not too bad. Uh, you know, you'll, you will find those around. Again, suppressor, it's only going to carry a plastic bottle suppressor. you got the standard hunting optic, which is fine. Naked, it's going to um, zero out to 200. With the scope, you can zero it out further to 800, but exactly how good a shot you are with it at 800, I guess, will remain entirely up to you. Um, I feel a little bit slower than the Mosin, maybe, but it also is a little bit smaller than the Mosin, so it might be the kind of thing that you prefer because you've got that um, capacity, or you've got that weight, or you've got an abundance of 76239s, for example. So, civilian hunting stroke sniper rifle, um, uh, all, all pretty good. Moving into the darkness, we're heading into two of the favorite military sniping rifles. you got the VSS, which is, of course, integrally suppressed. Takes 939s, which is the only round in the game that comes armor-piercing, uh, which is very, very good. It is a KA, so it is Eastern side of the weapon tree so it will take eastern stuff like the pso 11 scope which is a, a very high caliber scope and it does have a mag which it will take which is a 10 round magazine and um, this one's empty at the minute but it is uh, a pretty nice piece of kit the uh, optic needs a little bit of a tidy up on this one but otherwise very very nice integrally suppressed 24 
about 4 kg neat small handy vicious effective is probably how you'd put it and then of course we have this monster which is the relatively new ish dmr uh, about to be replaced by another sniper rifle or at least it's going to have another uh, contender it'll zero out naked to 1.1 with the scope i've got on it at the minute it'll actually only go 600 uh that is the uh atog 432 uh probably want the higher level atog i don't know if i've got one about my person right now um again it's only going to take i think uh yeah it won't take the um the standardized suppressor i think it only takes a bottle suppressor um it is uh western made takes 308 um widely regarded as a bit of a monster this one has a ghillie on it if i take the ghillie off you can see what it looks like it's got this lovely green body it's very distinctive it has that over wrap on the butt um yeah it's it's very nice it's a very distinctive uh piece of gear and very deadly and very effective takes up 27 about 3 kg so yeah very nice very nice very nice that is the dmr before we disappear into the night i've just loaded the vss so i can give you a chance of um, what that sounds like it's the vss go full auto very nice Thank you, team it is daylight again and we are here rounding off with the last of the weapon classes, possibly one of the largest, possibly one of the most diverse weapon classes, we are, of course, talking about assault rifles. There are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of things that can be done to them. There is absolutely no way I am talking about all of the variations. I will touch on some of the reasons why there are variations, and I will touch on uh, some of the other bits and pieces that um, happen to the variations, um, but uh, I am by no means uh, uh, touching on, on the absolute uh, lot of them. So uh, what, what have we got here, uh, and what is floating around here? Well, uh, we've got a variety of, a variety of things, and we're going to start with one of the smallest. So this is the uh, KAS uh, 74U, which is one of the KA variants. It's the smallest of the KA variants. It has a uh, takes up space of 18, weighs about 3 kg, has a lightweight stock. It will uh, handle a ghillie. It will also handle uh, a suppressor, but what it will handle is this suppressor. And this suppressor is the normalized suppressor, which is for selected rifles used by Eastern forces. Now, in terms of magazines, there's a 30 round magazine that carries the 5453 five, five, rounds. That's the semi auto version, full auto. And um, it's also interchangeable, as a lot of these are, with some extender mags. So we've got another mag down here, which will definitely work with it which as you can see here is a rather larger 45 round mag so you can definitely get this with a much bigger mag to it sticking right at the bottom there you can see so yeah there's um there's definite room for some attachments here that's worn it still sounds like it makes an awful lot of noise to me um but there you go it's probably the baby entry assault rifle which is not to say that it isn't deadly and like I say, you've got this suppressor on it, but I'm not desperately sure it makes a vast amount. Uh, it does make some difference. It is quite a lot louder without. Um, but there you go. Naked zeroing. Uh, looks like we'll go up to 300 uh, if I find a scope for it. So it will use Eastern scopes similar to perhaps uh, one of... Uh, none of these <laughs> none of these that I have will fit on this uh, I'm surprised I would have thought the PS01 
would have fitted on it, but it doesn't actually have a room for a scope, so you can't actually fit it with a scope. So there you are, KS74U. Um, I don't really use them much, I suppose. Uh, quite noisy, I think, uh, from my perspective. So not something I spend a lot of time using, but something you might want to uh, spend a bit of time using as well. We're going to uh, move on through the KAs. While we're here, we're going to pick up the KA74, which is this one. Uh, this is probably, you know, your, your larger standard kind of middle of the range KA rifle, uh, AK74. Uh, yeah, look, it comes with lots of stuff that's interchangeable. You can change things. You can change the buttstock. You can change the rail handguard. Uh, if you get a rail handguard, as it says, it allows you to mount additional accessories. That will or should allow you to mount the universal flashlight. So now you've got a rail on it. The rail is here. It will mount a ghillie as well. Um, it obviously, in this version, is mounting the PSO-1 scope. Uh, which is this one, bit of damage on that, but otherwise it's perfectly fine. Um, it will mount the upgraded version, which I think is the 101, uh, which is not that one, possibly that one. They look exactly the same, the 101. Yeah, so it will mount the, the slightly better version. We'll drop that off, and we will put in the better version, which I think is that. Yes, there we go, no problem. So you've got this version here, which uh, doesn't have a battery in, but it could have a battery in. Um, and you'll get the um, you'll get the obviously the reticule lighting up, etc. We've got universal flashlight. We've got the normalized suppressor, which is for the Eastern Forces. This one will carry a KA bayonet, which is a small knife, a fairly handy weapon of its own. And again, it's got 30 rounds here. But it will also carry the 45 round extender, which I've got down there. I don't think there are any more extender mags than that. Can't be 100% sure, but that's what you're going to get. Again, it will go full auto. Not a bad sound. Let's take the suppressor off, see what it sounds like. Noisy! And that's your KA-74. Takes up rooms to 24, about 5 kg. It's a fairly solid assault weapon. Um, what else are you going to say? Um, I have the KA-101 here, which is another variant. Export version of the modernized KA-74M with compatible attachments. <laughs> this one, if I take the ghillie off, it has a lovely finish. I like this. It's a very nice... A uh, very nice looking weapon, I think, uh, tidied up. It's got this uh, camo wooden buttstock and this uh, camo uh, handguard. Of course, again, uh, the thing with these is what you'll find is with these interchangeable attachments is this uh, isn't a rail. Uh, you need a rail handguard to allow the light attachment to be fit, as you saw on the KA-74. So because I've gone here for the aesthetic of the wooden handguard, I can't mount a flashlight which actually for this particular weapon which is set up for night sniping um is perfect because i don't need that uh there's a bayonet i've also got this this is a um 30 round ka 101 mag um this won't take the ka 74 mag um because it's a different kind of magazine this is obviously rocking 556 45s I think it was 55639s, uh, 54539s, correct? So different caliber of uh, bullet, so it isn't going to work. And in this instance, I've got the 1PN51, which is the night vision, which works only for the KA, absolutely useless in daylight. <laughs> um, so it's definitely one of those things, if you want this monster scope and you want to bring this monster scope along with you, that's all well and good. But it's only actually going to work in daylight, otherwise you're going to be relying on your single shot. Or you can go full auto, of course. Um, zeroes out to 300. Um, if I zoom in with the scope, scope at night will take it out to 700, which is fine. But it's only really going to work at night. And like I said, it takes a ghillie, which makes it look pretty neat. 
Um, and I like it. It's a pretty nice gun. Um, and it's it's pretty aesthetic and it's pretty handy with the suppressor. It's a good nighttime sniping rifle. Now, if I slide over here, there's the KAM, which is the last of the KA models that I have to show you. And again, it's a it's a classic um, KA47 variant. Um, so 76239 this time. So different again. Once again, depends on the attachments we have. In this case, it's gone for polymer buttstock. It has a polymer uh, handguard, which is not a rail. Uh, this one doesn't have a scope on it but we could easily go and find a compatible scope like i said we've got the um, pso1s over here in particular are the scopes that we are having a look at i don't think there are any more the rest of them are all no uh for different weapons we'll take the uh suppressor i think will it take the normalized suppressor let me just quickly check we'll take the normalized suppressor perhaps off the uh, KA-101 and we will uh, find our gun which is up here and we will check yes it absolutely will take it of course it will it's all compatible and the beauty with this one however is of course that you get this walloping great big drum mag which holds 75 rounds of 76239 um, so you want to go full auto it's going to make an awful lot of mess and an awful lot of noise zeroes out to a k um without a scope um, and obviously you want to put a scoop on top of it, something else, like I've said, the PSO, uh, we have a PSO here, for example, we can definitely have a look. Yeah, still zeroed out at 1000. So there you go. KAM, famous for being a base buster and it's famous for being a base buster because you load this puppy up with 75 and maybe you find a couple of these drum mags and you load them up 150 shots and you turn up you will very quickly chew your way through a base without the need for hefty hefty explosives so there you go there's the ka range of weapons and there's some interchangeability and you can move things around and you can add and you can take and you do bits and pieces and um yeah and you'll find them in a lot of places. Obviously, they're military weapons. You find them in military areas. Um, yeah, raft of different things attached to them. I have here the uh, AUR-A1. Now, I did actually, believe it or not, have an AUR-AX. And I dropped it on the ground. And I turned my back. And it's, uh, it's disappeared. So, I, I don't know. Uh, perhaps... I'm just wondering maybe if there's a big bird flying around and the big bird took it. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I had an AUR-AX. So there's an AUR-A1 and there's an AUR-AX. And to be honest, they look and behave exactly the same, although the AX is uh, arguably uh, a slightly better variant. So, yep, it will carry a ghillie. Yep, it will carry a suppressor. But I think that the only suppressor this carries is a bottle suppressor. Um, I don't see anything for it. This is the uh, Alliance suppressor. And this is the Eastern suppressor. And none of those fit. Which means that the only thing that's going to fit on this is a bottle. And it comes with these lovely little... Um, uh, I guess, waffle textured uh, 30 round box magazines. They're the only magazines that fit. Uh, sorry, this magazine only fits this rifle. Uh, it'll go burst, it'll go full auto. Um, it's got this funny little integral um, scope. Only takes it out to 400, so it's not like it's, 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 it's long range for this one in particular uh there are other mags i think it will take um i think there are uh is there a standard mag that it will take 
No, that's the suppressor, or is it limited to just the AUR? It may well be that it's just limited out to the AUR. Uh, yeah, so it is. It's, um, it's only got one mag. One mag is all you got. One mag is all you're going to get out of it. Um, yeah, I, I don't use them a lot, uh, really. I guess probably lack of possible variability in terms of function. They're pretty much close quarters. They are what they are. They're not really long-range weapons, which is my kind of preferred kind of place to be. Um, they obviously colored in as a bullpup type weapon, um, and they're designed to be relatively short distance. We've also got the Lamaz here, which again, staying in theme with the bullpup weapon, is that you have this uh, <coughs> 55645 five, carries a ghillie. The only suppressor it's going to carry is going to be a bottle. I've got standardized and normalized here. It isn't going to wear any of them. It has its own uh, type of mag for 55645s. Five, I'm pretty sure that all of the other standardized stuff I have is... Uh, no, it is 55645s. Five, five, so you should be able to use the uh, interchangeable mags. No, it's not going to let me use the interchangeable mags at all. It is only going to let me use a Lamaz mag. So again, like the AUR, it's limited uh, in a fashion. Um, we've got this, obviously, this interesting sighting arrangement here where you're actually sighting down what is ultimately a carry handle. It's a bit of an interesting design. You see it's probably similar to the, some of the... Um, the M16 uh, down there. Um, it cannot be detachable, that carry handle, which which is sometimes seen to be some, uh, seen by some to be a bit of a nuisance. So, of course, what you can do is you can saw it off. <laughs> and this is the sawed off version. And um, you just get yourself a saw and you end up with this instead, which is perhaps a little neater, I guess, if that's where you're going. Uh, 18. Uh, 4kg. Uh, I don't think there's very much difference uh, between that and the other one. No, 18, 4kg, 5.56, It's um, moderately close range. It's definitely hitting people up. It's definitely storming places. It's definitely that kind of assault rifle. Now we're going to move on here. We've got the M4. Um, we've got the... Uh, M16, and we've got a couple of others. So we'll have a look at the... Um, uh, let's start with a good old classic M16, I think. So, um, you know the story of the M16. So there you are, the M16. It's the American assault rifle. That's fine. You can put a suppressor on it. It does come with a bayonet. Uh, well, you can get a bayonet. Um, you can also get these um, standardized magazines i've got a double 60 round standardized magazine on this one um we're carrying the suppressor i'll take the suppressor off it's got a very interesting sound to it only comes in burst and auto, um, and that's what you're gonna get um not a lot of interchangeability as you can see not a lot of attachments not a lot of stuff going on. It's got one carry handle. It's got these, um, obviously, interchangeable mags. And like I've kind of said to you before, there are other interchangeable mags like this, which is a C mag. This is a 40 rounder. And then there is a 30 rounder. And then there is a 20 rounder. And then there is a 10. So you've got a whole range of different extent. And I, I was packing this, rocking this baby with a 60. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and all the way up to 60. You've got an awful lot of choices on this, even with just this being all that you have in terms of being able to rock up with a little suppressor. And obviously a rolloping great big mag that you can shoot lots of things at. So while you've got the KA with the 75, this has got a 60. So you can also still do quite a bit of damage with a 60. And that's the jolly old M16A2. 
Keeping in mind with the M series, we have the M4, which is a more up-to-date, considerably more optimized version that you can add an awful lot of things to. We've got this telescopic buttstock on here. We've got a rail, a rail handguard. You can also put in a, a standard handguard. Um, so this rail allows me to pack on the light, as you've seen before. It will take a ghillie. This one has uh, the larger ATOG, the 648. You can fit a suppressor with it. This is also on a 60, um, which is which is pretty good. This is the ATOG, which is a, a lovely, lovely scope. Um, zero is all the way out to 800. Um, naked, this is really only zeroing at 25, so it's really uh, quite short range. But... Uh. Full auto, semi-auto is all you're going to get with this puppy. Um, but yeah, it's, again, because it's got so many possible variations and variants and things, I mean, if we take those, um, the ATOG off, uh, what else have we got in here that will work with it? You can even put uh, iron sights on, which is uh, not a problem. This is just a, your bog standard uh, backup iron sights. That's absolutely no drama. Uh, we've got here, what have we got here? This is Baraka sites, uh, I think. Yeah, so you've got these Baraka sites, which actually if you put a battery in that, you'll get a little red dot down in the middle, which, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want with. And then we've got, I think we also have the, um, well, that's a, a standard combat site. You've got the uh, RVN site. We've got the other ATOG 432 site. So, you know... Again, the, the possible amount of different uh, variants that you could set up with this thing is um, out of staggering. You know, staggering. There's all, all kinds of stuff you could fiddle around with, different kinds of handguards, different kinds of bits and pieces. So a highly customizable piece of kit and a piece of kit that a lot of people look out for as a result. That is the M4A1. Right, moving on over here, uh, before we get on to the last two, we have the LAR, which is, uh, uh, again, it's it's an old style um, battle rifle, is what they call it, selective fire battle rifle, um, again, from a detachable magazine, firing 308s, which is awesome, because they pack a hefty punch, um, which is great, so interchangeable with some of the bullets that you're using for your tundra for example um so you might carry if you are carrying you might carry two long rifles if you want the lar and uh, a tundra or something uh, although that's quite heavy um the weapon itself takes up a space of 24 about 5 kg uh again this is this one's got a polymer buttstock it will carry a ghillie does take the atog and other stuff um, not sure about the suppressor side of things. Doesn't think so. I think it's only going to take a bottle because I can see from the fluted end of the barrel it isn't going to take a standardized suppressor of any kind. So again, a slightly interchangeable in terms of the kind of um, uh, scope you're using. We'll zero out to 600 naked. This scope will take it out. This will take it out to 600, which is fine. It'll go full auto for you, and the semi-auto allows you to even take a single shot. Um, quite a hefty bit of gear. Yeah. Not bad. Again, it's another good... It's got long range. It's good. It's good, good for distance as well as uh, good for up close. So whereas you might find that the KAS is really going to be your up close and personal kind of weapon, and so might your a AURs. Something like the LAR, something like the uh, the M4, uh, wherever you are, M4A1 there, might be the kind of thing that you want about you for long range. The same with the 101. So versatility, I suppose, is the key down there. Uh, we'll have a look at the Vakir. So this was the last gun added, quite recently added, just a couple of months ago. Um, it's very interesting. It's 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 incredibly small, listed as an assault rifle, but I mean honestly, it's about the size of an SMG when you think about it. You think about uh, what we were looking at earlier. I wish we could get you to turn around, but I can't. 
Um, it's about the size of an SMG, but it's listed as a full assault rifle. And it fires 939s, one of the few armor pacing rounds in the game. It'll carry a ghillie. Uh, it will, uh, I think, not wear anything other than a bottle suppressor, uh, which is a little bit odd, um, I think. But there you go. Probably not the only one. Um, it has its own mag for carrying uh, 939s. In fact, we'll have a look at that. Um, it's inter an interchangeable Vakir mag with the other 939 weapons, um, but it's only that mag. So you've got <laughs> hefty, very, very hefty noisy for absolute sure. And um, goes at 200. So you're still short saying, you know, uh, moderate range, you're not talking about something that's going to be a longer range weapon, even though I've got a scope on it for accuracy. Um, it's the kind of thing that you're going to be uh, mainly using in an urban environment with that kind of range. Um, yeah, new, relatively new. I've not used it a lot. Small, 18, 4 kg. So hefty, packs a punch, 939s. They're really going to make a mess of you, but small and slim and nifty. And that brings us on to the final of the assault rifles, but by no means the least, the the S-Val derivative of the VSS, um, which is um, just marvelous, because we've obviously got the uh, integral suppression. It will take a ghillie, it will take uh, an ATOG scope, um, it will take uh, a torch, apparently. I don't think I have a universal flashlight sitting here right now, but we'll take their absolute word for it. They will take a universal flashlight. And um, it's using the Vakir mag again, like I said, because it also packs 939, 24, about 1 kg. I mean, it's so light. You know? And... So mean. So yeah, I mean, this is this is also uh, a, a relatively small. Takes up a little bit more space because of its length, but relatively small. Oh no, there we are. About four kg. It's gonna say about one kg. Sounds a bit, bit a bit crazy. That's for the ammo. The gun itself is uh, is four kg. So um, yeah, it's uh, you know a lot of people want the S file. And it's a very nice weapon to have because of it, because it's got this uh, ability to be integrally suppressed and also go fully auto. If you have to, you could, in theory, obviously swap it down to semi and you only have to use one shot. You're using one shot to head kill people or whatever. But if you do need to go nasty, flip it on to full auto and, um, and away you go. So then you only need one weapon for clearing. The issue you got being obviously 939s are an expensive round, and by expensive I mean they're hard to find. So it's the kind of thing you're only going to use if and when you absolutely have to. So that is it for all of the rifles. I've I've made a little bit of a mess over here. Like I say, uh, I'm a bit I'm a bit surprised that my AUR AX vanished. It was here. It seems to have fallen through a crack in the pavement and somehow disappeared, which is something of a bit of a nuisance. I can absolutely tell you, because I did want to have a look at that, and I'm really sorry that it disappeared. Um, just just before I go, a couple of things. Obviously, I've picked up some other odds and sods and bits and pieces. Here's a KA rail handguard, for example. Uh, looking at a couple of different types of DMR mags. There's, uh, there's a 20 round, there's a 10 round as well. Uh, for the DMR, uh, these are all things that you've already seen before. The KAM uh, for the assault rifle, so instead of using the drum mag, these are a couple of other mags for pistols that you've seen kicking around. Uh, a bunch of interchangeable suppressors and mainly scopes and various things. Like I've said, you've got these standard mags here, which are they're calling the Mag C mag. Um, which really fits into the uh, M uh, type weapons, which is which is pretty good. You get other things here like more grips for the M4A1, um, a variety of different other magazines for various weapons, and a whole bunch of uh, various other bits and pieces. This is the MP 
uh, series handguard. I'm not really sure how much benefit it gets. And um, and at the bottom of the combat sites. I also have here ammo boxes. Um, you might see these in and around. You might run across these. They're very nifty things, the old ammo box. Um, they're great for storage because you can fill them with ammo. And then you can pick them up and put them in another storage container. Um, so these are a sub-storage container which helps neaten things up a lot. Uh, you could carry it about your person, I suppose. But really it's for transport. Um... I mean, obviously, if you had one weapon, you might have 20 boxes of ammo, um, which are particularly for that weapon. If you've got the drum mag and you're going out to crack bases, you might load this whole thing up with uh, uh, stacks of pre-opened ammo. So all you have to do is sit down, open up your drum mag, reload it, and then get back in again, bearing in mind that there'll be a little bit of time to get that, a little bit of time for that to be done. Uh, but this is ammo boxes, and these are all the various kinds of ammo that you can get uh, with these guns, just in case you don't know. There's the um, 22s that you're looking for. This is 12 gauge buckshot. This is the uh, 12 gauge uh, slug. You have also uh, further up here, you have the 76239s. You have the 9x19s, which is obviously very handy you have uh the three eighties you have the forty fives you have over here the three five sevens you have the four five uh five four five three nines this is a box of tracers you have seven six two five four tracers we've got nine three nine a p armor piercing we also have over here the five five six four fives which come in the brown box and we have over here the 308 win rounds and you get tracer variants of a lot of these which uh, is helpful for uh, firing at night you get the opportunity to see a little bit more about what is going on so that is ammo boxes and ammo and that is uh all things guns as far as uh as far as i know and as far as i can help you with like i said there are an awful lot of attachments there are an awful lot of bits and pieces there are an awful lot of things to learn about what to pick up and what not to pick up and uh what you're after and um you know all the various bits and pieces that, that are going on and all of the bits that do work and the bits that don't work and the things that are compatible and not compatible and all of these kinds of, of things. In terms of uh, how you repair some of these things, there's there's really only two things. There's the gun cleaning kit, and the gun cleaning kit in general will repair the gun itself and the magazines, but not the attachments. So you can't repair a polymer handguard with a gun cleaning kit. Uh, the gun cleaning kit will tidy up a magazine and change its condition status um, but and it will change a gun so if your gun has a worn status this one won't have or sorry if it has a degraded status um, that will uh, knock it back scopes electrical repair kit so if you have a scope which is not in the best of condition uh, we had a PSO up here it may yeah there's a damaged PSO you use your electrical repair kit, and the electrical repair kit allows you to fix the scope, and you can use the scope for whatever you like, and it becomes fully functional, etc., etc., etc. That's that's about it um, for dealing with uh, for dealing with guns. Um, I've covered things before with jams. Uh, you know, if you if you get a jam and you've got a gun that has jammed, um, you, what you need to do is you need to hold it. And you um, use the um, reload button persistently, and it will eventually go through cycling uh, an animation, which will be your player basically smacking the gun as much as he can until he clears it, and then you'll be off and away. Um, so you can definitely clear jams. And as I mentioned before to you, jams are more likely to happen the more damage your gun and the magazine is. 
and less likely to happen with bolt action weapons if happen at all well i mean i i hope that this has been um of some interest to you i've i've hope that you have found it very useful i hope that it has painted a bit of a picture about the kinds of guns that you will find on the map and perhaps some of their characteristics and some of the space that they take up and the weights and the noises that they make and how adjustable they might be to your playing style it is by no means like i say an in-depth expose um, there's just simply so many things you could possibly go into. You could spend hours arguing about one single gun. And as I've said before, one of the other things with a lot of these guns is uh, each gun is gonna uh, be different. Uh, you're gonna have um, you're gonna have your own preference on what you want with your guns. Uh, you might like it because it's aesthetic. You might like it for you might set it up for a particular purpose like this is set up for uh, night. You might like it because it's quiet. You might like it because it's small. Uh, it, it however it works for however your play style is um, may be entirely up to you. Long range, short range, uh, full auto, single shot, bolt action. All of these kinds of things are considerations to your play style and how you choose to play. And you may find that there's some guns just don't work with you very well and there's some guns that do. And it's a good job that we got so many. So I would say get out there and try it. Don't argue about which one is good. It actually doesn't matter. What works for you works for you. And if you can kill a guy on the other side and he's got a gun then it really doesn't matter what his gun is and whether it's better or not because uh, he's dead. And that's probably the simplest bit of all. So there you go. I do really hope that you like it. It was an awful lot of an effort to get this done. I'm really upset about the AUX. Uh, I don't know where it went to or why it went there, uh, which, is, which is definitely a bit of a shame um, because we did go to an awful lot of effort uh, myself, Mr. C Money, and Orihime to actually get all these together, and it's a bit of annoyance that that one gun decided to disappear off the face of the map. <clears throat> so, thank you to them for all of their efforts. Uh, thank you to me for all of my efforts, because there was an awful lot of time running around to try and find some things as well. And thank you to you for tuning in and listening and enjoying. And feel free to pass comments. Dare I say it, if you put your comments in the bottom, which is your favorite gun and why? And do drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel. And do join us for our next exciting Daisy Tips, whatever that might be. And I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now. PlayStation.